Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Hog Island Boas are a great island boa from Central America. It's highly recommended for the locality boa keeper. I've been getting some questions lately about my Hog Island Boas and I actually haven't taken them out lately to show you guys. So today I thought I'd take out some of the holdbacks I'm growing up, give you guys an update on the boa breeding or the, the Hog Island Boa breeding, which is going on right now. And you know, hopefully I'll have some baby Hog Island Boas later this year, so stay tuned. Hog Island Boas are actually one of the first available locality boas going all the way back to the 70s and 80s. These guys were exported in pretty large numbers and they're from two small islands, the Cayo Cochinos or Hog Islands that are off of the Caribbean coast of Honduras. And they have this kind of hypomelanistic look to them, much lighter colors uh, than the mainland boas with lots of pinks and uh, reds and oranges and even some greens and blues. So they're really colorful boas. Just a really beautiful form of boa. Uh, in general, they're a little bit smaller than mainland boas. Not quite dwarfs. I might call them semi-dwarfs. Typically, they're in the four to six foot range as adults. And the Hog Island boas are, you know, one of my favorites. Um, I've had them for quite a while. It's been a couple of years though since I've had a successful litter. I think what happened, I had a male who sired several litters year after year after year, and he just got kind of tired. So I didn't get a litter uh, in 2021. 2022, I had a female who was gravid. She ended up slugging out, no babies, so that was a bit of a disappointment. But this year, I have actually one of my holdback males uh, from 2018 who's doing his first year of breeding. So hopefully, he'll mix things up and we'll have a successful litter. But I thought I'd show you, this is one of my female holdbacks from 2018. She's doing great. Um, probably not, maybe maybe ready next year in 2023 uh, to 2024 to give birth, but uh, we'll have to see. But uh, I'd say she's probably about four feet long right now, you know, eating medium sized rats. You can see the beautiful colors. She's actually a pure Sears Island, Hog Island Boa. And, um, Sears Island, or Sears Island, Pure Sears Bloodline Hog Island Boa. The Sears Bloodline is one of the most famous bloodlines. It's been in captivity for several decades now. And um, this is an offspring from two Sears Bloodline animals bred by Vin Russo. The Sears Bloodline is one of the most popular in captivity, but there are quite a few other really nice bloodlines available as well. I'm gonna show you some other animals from my other bloodline. But uh, one thing you have to be concerned about with hog islands, you know, as well as with pretty much any locality boa, is the purity. Because people will often cross hog island boas with other non-hog island boas. There is a cross called a hypo-hog where they take a hypo, hypomelanistic, you know, common boa, they breed it to a hog island boa. The offspring are known as hypo-hogs. And these animals are not pure hog island boas. Sometimes people sell them as hog island boas. They don't mention that it's only 50% hog island boa. Sometimes they look pretty similar as well. So you have to be really careful. Ask questions about your breeder. Ask to see pictures of the breeding stock just to make sure that they have the real thing. Uh, just, you know, something you definitely should be concerned about. I see lots of pictures of animals that are obviously not hog island boas that people are trying to sell as hog island boas. So be really careful. Ask questions if you're in uh, doubt. You know, ask for people to give you recommendations of breeders, etc. Make sure you're getting the real thing. Thought I'd grab another holdback from 2018. This is a female, another female, full sibling to the one I just showed you. She's actually in shed right now. You can see she's looking a little milky, but it gives you an idea. In general, the babies from a litter are pretty similar looking. There's not a huge amount of variability, but they have these beautiful colors that don't really come out all that well for the camera, but seeing one in person is definitely an experience. So these again are Sears bloodline, and there were actually a huge number of these animals taken from their small islands. The Hog Islands are very small islands, just you know about a mile across or so, don't quote me on the exact size. But you wouldn't think that they could ho hold a huge population of boas with this you know limited amount of geography. But back in the 80s up to the 90s, there was just a 
crazy number of these animals that were exported from these islands for the pet trade, something like tens of thousands of them, which is kind of crazy. And um, when finally they were given protection, the islands were made into a national park by the government of Honduras. It appeared that they were probably extinct or they were, you know, nearly extinct. But luckily they managed to recover and the population has rebounded. They're now fully protected. Um, so let's, the, the situation for these animals in the wild fortunately looks good at this time. But, you know, thinking about the captive situation, there were lots of these animals taken uh, into, you know, from that wild into captivity. And so there's still likely to be quite a good um, amount of animals, different bloodlines available in captivity, provided they're kept pure, which of course is one of the downsides. It doesn't always happen. People will often cross them with non-hog island boas. And once you do that breeding, you can never get a pure hog island boa back again, which is unfortunate. So please keep these pure. Please do your homework and, you know, search out breeders of pure hog island boas just to make sure that you're getting the real thing for your locality boa collection. Now I want to show you a couple of animals, holdbacks that I have from my other bloodline. And these are uh, 2019 born holdbacks. This is a male. This guy is actually half Sears bloodline. And his mother was from a bloodline from an animal that I got from Ron Greenberg from Ron's reptiles. And I actually like the results of this pairing better than the, uh, the pure Sears bloodline. And these animals are a little bit darker in color, but they have much more intense coloration, a lot more oranges and lots of earth tones and pinks and greens and just really beautiful looking animals. And they also have quite a bit of speckling. As you can see, these little black flecks that are over the body, especially the back sides, but then also some on the belly. And this is a characteristic of hog island boas. The wild ones will almost always have this flecking. And some people have tried to breed it out, breed it out in captivity. There's some bloodlines that are just much more washed out looking. But I, in general, I prefer the ones with the flecking. They just look more natural, more beautiful to me. So this guy is, as I mentioned, a 2019 born. Uh, he'll probably be ready to breed next year. Since the, you know, the, but the males can breed a, little, a smaller size than the females, but just doing really well, really nice hog island boa. And finally, here's a female from that 2019 litter. Just another really nice looking animal. She's a little bit lighter than her brother that I just showed you. Maybe a little bit less flecking, a little bit more pink color, but just another really nice looking animal. They do also change colors quite a bit. They get kind of darker and lighter. Sometimes when they go into their darker phase, the colors just come out a little bit better. So I'll often try to take pictures of them when they're in their dark phase, just because it really shows you the, the nice, beautiful colors and lots of different shades of earth tones and also greens, blues, and pinks, and oranges, of course. So I just thought I'd end just a little bit of info on the care of these guys. In general, the hog islands are pretty easy to keep and the husbandry that you can use on uh, just regular, you know, common boas will work well with hog island boas. They do like to climb, you know, they are somewhat arboreal and they're in the wild, especially as babies. So you'll probably want to have a high cage with lots of branches for them to climb on. In addition, they tend to be a little bit more picky as far as eating. And this is especially true with babies. One of the things that I found frustrating as a breeder is that a pretty good percentage of any litter won't feed voluntarily from the beginning. Somewhere about a third of the babies that I have, they just won't take live uh, mice. And I've tried all the tricks. I've tried, you know, feeding lizards, scenting, using birds, it's pretty much everything. And it generally doesn't seem to work very well. So I have to resort to assist feeding them mouse tails and about um, a third of the babies or so. And usually they will start eating after doing this for a couple months. You know, sometimes I do lose animals that just don't take food for whatever reason. But it's been one of the frustrating things about breeding these animals. And I found that this is it's actually worse for the hog island boas than some of the other island boas, like my crawl key or cocker key. In general, I might have, you know, one or two animals from each litter that doesn't feed. But with the hog island boas, it's like about a third of them. And 
just uh, something that I find frustrating. I've also found that in general they can be a little picky about switching over from live to frozen thawed. And in fact, it might take them a year or two in some cases to make the switch. And then even switching from uh, mice to rats can be a little tricky. This particular animal is insisting on mice. You know, I'm feeding her jumbo mice, even though her siblings are now eating small and medium sized rats. She just doesn't like, you know, the, the look of the rat or the smell of the rat. And in fact, I offered her a rat um, about a week ago and she took it and constricted it and I thought she was going to eat it. But then I went back a day later and she hadn't eaten it. She had just, you know, dropped it. And I couldn't get her interested in it, so she actually didn't get to feed uh, that time. But, you know, hopefully she'll switch eventually. But it's just something to keep in mind if you're thinking about keeping hog island boas. Sometimes they're a little bit less flexible as far as the food that you're going to give them. And also, if you're getting a baby hog island boa, be absolutely sure that it's feeding and ask the questions, ask your breeder what is feeding, if it's eating frozen thawed or if it's eating live mice or you know live rats, whatever. Just make sure you know before you get the boa. Anyway, I hope you like looking at these hog island boas. Definitely one of my favorites and hopefully we'll have some babies on the ground this summer. So stay tuned for that. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.